A new poll shows that Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski could really be vulnerable in her next contest. That poll shows Murkowski is 15 points behind the opposition. Kelly Shibaka, one note, that poll was commissioned by the three-term incumbent's opponent. But could it be a bellwether for the senator? That's right. So joining us for the answers, Democratic strategist, owner of JC Strategies, Jennifer Holsworth Carp, and senior director of policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute, Rachel Bovard. Rachel, let me start with you. People have been writing the death sentence for Lisa Murkowski for a long time. That's true. She's always survived. She literally won a write-in campaign. I mean, who the hell does that, that in the crazy. 2010s? But this could actually be the end. Trump as pledged from the very beginning. I remember he would be like, I don't know where I'm gonna be three years from now, but I know that I will be in the state of Alaska campaigning against Lisa Murkowski. Do you think that this could finally be it for her? I never count Lisa Murkowski out because yeah. if you're running against Murkowski, you aren't just running against the woman, you're running against the institution. And the machine. And as yeah. you, yeah, <laughs> at the machine, it's true. Right. And as you point out, I mean, this is the woman, like if she gets beaten in the primary, you have to beat her again. Because she lost the primary in 2010, won on a write in campaign, you know, with the infamous Murkowski stamp, you know, that she handed out to everyone who was voting for her. So, again, this is someone who's not going to go down without a fight. But as like if Trump is going to go to Alaska, it's going to be brand versus brand. And it may be right that Trump is the one that finally topples Lisa Murkowski, because, again, she also is the brand of politician. That is the Rob Portman, the Roy Blunt, you know, the type of politician, the Pat Toomey that's been taking themselves out of the running, recognizing that this is going to be bloody. Uh, so but Lisa's going to, I think, stay in it to the end because that's just who she is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Jen, Rachel makes a great point, which is that she gets two bites of the apple. Even if she loses a Republican primary, she's still got a good shot at it in the general election. What do you think of the dynamics here? Yo, know, what's that old saying, you know, well, never interrupt while your enemy is making a mistake. You know, <laughs> I think that if they're going to take Lisa Murkowski out, uh, by all means, please, President Trump, please go to Alaska and campaign for her opponent. You know, I think it might be an opportunity for a Democratic pickup. But having said that, um, no, you definitely shouldn't count her out. I was, as a political science nerd, I was obsessed with her write-in campaign. Um, it was phenomenal that that actually won her back the seat. So no, I, I wouldn't count her out. And at the end of the day, I actually think she survives. I might have egg on my face at the end of the primary, but I actually don't think um, hmm. that the uh, new opponent takes her out. I think she survives and eventually I think she'll go on to re-election. Yeah, I mean, I've, who was a Democrat from Mark Begich or something like that? I mean, you obviously won and uh, that was a long time ago. But I'm wondering, Rachel, from your perspective, what is the bellwether for the Trump effect in the primaries? Because it's like we're pointing out, Murkowski's actually probably the one best suited to survive any sort of Trump effort. But take it in a broader context, and it's the reason I wanted to cover this poll, to at least show where the GOP primary base is. Well, how can we look at it from that perspective? Well, you know, I think Trump has the best case in Alaska because it is a fairly red state. And I think a lot of the issues that Trump runs on appeal there. Right. That is sort of that base, you know, working class base of the Republican Party type in Alaska. So I think it's a little bit of an outlier in that sense, um, because, again, in states like Pennsylvania, where Pat Toomey retired or Missouri, where Roy Blunt retired, it's a little bit more of a you know red blue dynamic. But, you know, I think he is going to have an impact here because, again, it's not just about Trump himself. It's about how much you can represent the issues that he ran on that appeal to those base voters. And Lisa Murkowski has never been quite a vector of Trumpism. <laughs> in fact, I think she's run in the other direction from it. So, uh, you know, it's unclear if she'll be able to sort of make that case, because, again, the Republican Party expects things from their politicians now that I'm not sure Murkowski, you know, in her long career, can can point to and be like, yes, this this is still relevant. You know, Jen, it's actually interesting. Trump for a Republican did comparatively poorly in the state of, Ala of Alaska. This was the tightest margin for a Republican since George H.W. Bush beat Bill Clinton by only 9.1 percent. Trump won the state by about 10 percentage points. Biden won Anchorage narrowly. He was the first Democrat to do so since LBJ. So Alaska's politics, I do not claim to be an Alaska expert whatsoever. It's one of the few states I've never been to. I don't have sort of like a visceral feel for the politics there. But it does seem like it's a little bit more independent minded and that there's a little more sort of like um, less just direct partisan tribal thinking than in other parts of the country, which is why I think Murkowski was able to win that write in campaign to start with. 
and why she's probably still pretty well positioned here. Yeah, and I'm not an Alaska expert either, but from what I've read into it, I actually think that the Alaskan electorate uh, is highly sophisticated when it comes to issues of environmentalism and conservation. Those are sort of two buzzwords, one the, you know, the Democratic Party uses and one the Republican Party uses. And if conservation in terms of folks on the right side of the political spectrum is important, then Donald Trump is not your guy, right? He spent a lot of time you know, showing himself to not be into conservation when it comes to policy. In fact, took a lot of steps to destroy it. So I think if the Alaskan electorate is looking at things that could actually harm them and be a detriment to their ecology and their environment, they're not going to vote for somebody who's aligned with Donald Trump. And they're certainly not going to vote for somebody who is under his thumb. That, I think, is a very important piece to look at in terms of Alaskan voters. Yeah, I'm really intrigued to see how it goes. But maybe we'll make a trip to Alaska. Oh, All I right. would love Thanks, that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Appreciate ladies. It. Great to see you both. Thank you. Thank you. More rising for you after this.